Hey, welcome to the High Performance Tiny House by LG Squared here in Central Florida. We're about an hour north of Tampa on the banks of the Withlacoochee River. The past couple of weeks we've been building our foundation and framing our main floor. foundation for this 400 square foot tiny house is fairly simple. We've got two strip footings with masonry walls that extend about 12 inches above grade. Vertical reinforcement every 12, every 24 inches tied into a continuous concrete bond beam. You'll see with the floor framing that we've extended it out about two feet to give this hovered look. On either end of the foundation we've got beams that support this cantilevered floor. Our floor assembly is very much like our wall and roof assembly. We've got our framing with cavity insulation. Outside of that, we've got sheathing. And on, a, on the outside of all that is two inches of continuous insulation. What we've done with our floor is taken that assembly, the wall, and we've turned it 90 degrees and made it into a floor. So our wall is our floor is our roof. And then we connect all of those components together at the corners for a continuous thermal enclosure. Now how did we do that on this tiny house? It's 16 feet by 26 feet long. Divided up into sections, and three 8 foot sections and one 2 foot section. The first 8 foot section that we built, we built it upside down. We wanted the sheathing to be underneath and we wanted it to be continuous past our foundation walls. What we tried with the rest of the floor was a little bit different. We laid down all of our sheathing, we blocked it up from below, and taped all the seams, got all that square, and then we put our framing on top of that. So the entire floor, the sheathing is all square, and then we did our layout, and it kept all of our floor framing nice and square, nice and straight. So this was probably less time consuming because just inherently a little bit simpler. Flipping the floor, a little more time consuming, but now that we know how to do it, we'd probably do it again, because I like how we were able to work from above, a lot simpler, nice and solid uh, fastening, ceiling. So now that everything's been flipped over and we've, we've brought everything together, we gotta secure it to the foundation. So we used a thing called a fine saw and cut little slots for our hurricane ties. I'm pretty anal about my air barrier and all of my control layers around, around my building enclosures. Once those were attached, we went around with our uh, liquid flashing and sealed up every single one of those slots from the outside and on the inside. More importantly, from the outside. We wanna stop all of our air, moisture, and heat on the outside before it ever gets to the inside. Now, all of the two by 12 framing, as you'll notice, is all just, is non-pressure treated. It's because it's inside our air and moisture barrier, which is that green plywood. Well, that green stuff, some people call it a weather resistive barrier. It controls air and moisture. Okay, so that's on the bottom, protecting all of the structure from, from that point all the way up. Now once we've got that perfect air and moisture barrier, we can start filling these cavities and putting our subfloor down and then we're ready for walls. All of the walls and the roof and the floor, again, are going to be tied together with that continuous thermal enclosure. It's so critical to get all of those connections and all those details correct. That's why we're so anal about it. That's what keeps the inside in and the outside out. Keeps you comfortable, keeps you from having to deal with this humidity, and it keeps your energy consumption down when you heat the space. That heating and cooling stays inside. It doesn't escape through cracks, gaps, holes. Or... Subscribe to this channel at the very end of this video and you'll be able to watch every step of the way, watching us get really anal with our air barrier and our thermal barrier, as well as all the finish, all the interior finishes, and how we're going to build this tiny house. This whole project is an experiment. We're trying a lot of things out on our own. All of our clients from here on out will benefit from everything we're learning in this construction process. Thanks for stopping by the High Performance Tiny House by LG Squared. 
and we look forward to seeing you next time when we get our cavity insulation in and our subfloor. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button at the end so you can follow the entire process of this high performance tiny house.